Alright, this was a little clip that I almost threw away because I didn't even notice it. But if you notice the little uh, thing on the left of the screen, to the left of the rocks, um, you'll see a, it's a man standing on a boat. And I slowed this way down so you can actually see him. Um, he's going to throw a net um, here shortly. So... You keep an eye on that guy right there and in, in the background you actually see somebody else that's uh, standing in this boat with him. You don't see the boat and that is due to diffraction or um, refraction. Um, I think it's more like being the light being deflected upward to where you can't see that boat. It's like uh, miraging on the land that causes things to disappear like a, uh, a car going down inside of a uh, pool of water that's not there you lose the car and then it will emerge on the other side of it but I thought that was a little interesting clip and uh, the, the video was only for a couple of seconds and I didn't even notice this guy in the video um, otherwise I would have zoomed back in on him and not these stupid rocks um, so, uh, um, I thought it was pretty funny when I actually looked at it and said, wow, that's a, that was a guy throwing a net. Now, one of the things that I did notice was, um, when I had my, um, compensation exposure uh, lighting turned down on it uh, yeah it did make a little darker of a picture but it it kind of stops some of the um, mirroring uh, effect the miraging effect uh, you know the distortion um, it stops some of that so you know in the future um, what I'll try to do is uh, you know turn down that light exposure a little bit uh, especially here in Florida we you know we get beamed by that uh, sun, uh, especially when you're out over the water. Um, you know, the water reflects the sun right back in your face. Uh, you can wear a hat all day long and your face still gets sunburned if you're out fishing on the water. And that's one thing that I do is I do an awful lot of fishing. Um, and as I zoom around here, you know, I, I see these other fish, but uh, or <laughs> other fish, these other rocks. And as I zoom in on them, you know, you, you also see that uh, distortion, that mirroring effect, that miraging effect. Um, but, you know, what's really cool is you can see this edge of the water where it turns into that mirror. Um, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. That mirror can deflect um, things even further away it actually can deflect now these rocks are closer to me than that boat was with the two guys in it um, and with the one guy throwing the net um, I'm gonna be taking little parts and pieces uh, from a bunch of these videos and I'm gonna use my zoom tool on them and try to bring them in a little closer um, on a recap video um, after I show all my videos from this particular day Um, also too what I'd like you to do is uh, also look at the clouds you know as I zoom in you know you'll see the or, or as I'm zoomed back you'll see this you know little sliver of black area just underneath all these clouds and as I zoom in those you know that black area gets wider why because those clouds that are right out there are just as high as the clouds that are above me um, and that's what I try to, um, you know, reiterate that, you, you know, these areas here that you're looking out on a long distance, they don't seem to be, you know, it just seems to be this little sliver. But of course, as I zoom in, this little sliver becomes a bigger gap. Okay. So as I zoom out now, you know, you can just see the tops of those. And as I zoom in the rest of the way, and there was another little fish that flickered there. 
<laughs> and that even that didn't even look like a mullet. That looked like a, what we call a needle fish. Um, we got all kinds of little fish that jump out of the water here. Um, but this is a line of rock here where I usually videotape uh, boats from Bayport coming off of. If you watch some of my other videos of boats from Bayport, um, you know, uh, this is where I catch those shrimp boats coming out of. A lot of the shrimp boats come out of this channel. And, uh, you know, I'm always out here trying to get some really good video of boats out on the water and then try to explain what's going on to them, with them. Um, now, as I'm zooming around here, you know, I'm, I'm trying to show you this island, this edge, the water out in front of it. Um, and this area right here during the summer, a lot of people will come into this back side of this channel. It, there's a big bay. And they do a lot of boating there. A lot of party boats go there, pontoon boats. And they all go out there and have a good time. Uh, you know, kids float around on their inner tubes. And, you know, all the people are out there barbecuing on their boats, you know. <laughs> Uh, having picnics and probably drinking beer and having a good time. Uh, but, you know, it's really a family orientated little boating area. Uh, you know, the Redneck Yacht Club. <laughs> and one day I'll go out here and get on this island and uh, videotape them. Now, as you look out here, um, you know, I can zoom in on this. Uh, channel marker and actually show you where that water line is but you know stuff that is further out it gets hard to distinguish uh, because of the depth perception of where the actual water line is but I mean you can clearly see this sign um, and in some of my video I wish I would have just kept it on auto focus because I put on manual focus and because of the light uh, hitting my viewing screen um, I really could not tell when, when I was uh, in focus or not. Um, and, and instead of me cutting these parts out of my videos, I'm going to go ahead and probably just show them um, so you can kind of see my mistake that I made uh, using a manual adjustment. And it really wasn't a mistake because I think the manual adjustment is a, uh, or manual focus is a really good uh, tool to use. Um, you know, especially when you're out zooming out long distances. But the other thing is, is to um, maybe put a, a light deflector or something over your viewing screen so the light from above you isn't, you know, blinding you out from seeing what you're actually uh, viewing. Uh, there were several things that I didn't even see on my on my camera as I was uh, doing these videos. Um, so uh, I, I didn't focus on them. Um, and then the things I did see and I tried to focus on, I really couldn't see very well to see if I was uh, on a good focus. Um, it's not like at night, you know, when you're at night, you can really easily see your screen because, of course, it's got light in it. Um, you know, there's I, I had my tripod up on a little bit of a rock hill. So I, I'm, I'm going to assume it was like uh, three feet above the water. So at that point, my tripod was about, um, I'm, I'm going to say, eight feet high. Because um, these, these rock islands, uh, the ones further out there, and, and even this one, I could have got on higher ground, but I would have had to go underneath the trees where all the birds poop on you. Uh, there's... There's pelicans and cranes and all kinds of birds up in those trees, and believe me, uh, they, they poop all over those trees. Sometimes the ground or the the whole trees are white from bird poop. So I try to I try not to get underneath them. Um, but I'm gonna show like a 360 or 160 degree view. But I do do kind of a 360 in here too to. To kind of show you, um, I don't know if it's going to be in this video, but I, I I do kind of show a 360 degree, so you can kind of visualize where I'm at. Um, this is a long chain of uh, islands that I'm sure that a lot of the rocks that are on these islands are what they dredged up to make these channels. Um, and I'm gonna 
uh, move my tripod down along the edge of the wall and my tripod uh, up to the lens from the ground to the lens is about five and a half feet and this is going to be really close to where I'm going to put my tripod and my camera is right at the water's edge to give you the best uh, shot I can um, at a low area alright so uh, let's uh, see what happens uh, in this next part okay just see so see where I'm putting my tripod here right down on the water's edge here. So, I'm going to put my camera up here and uh, mount it. So you guys can definitely see where I'm at. There's an airboat going by. Hey, airboat. Got the dot in my Awful loud. Awful loud. Yeah, these airboats are awful loud, and uh, you know that's I, I I cut that the audio out of this because it was just just too loud. Them uh, airboats just they blow your eardrums out. They they wear earmuffs, but they don't think about everybody else. Now right here, um, where you see these palm trees at in the background, um, that's Bayport right there, and I'm you and I'm usually standing right out in the front of those palm trees because there's a little area right there. Um, when the tide ain't too high, uh, you can get in there. There's a little park right in there. Um, you can get in there and stand on that edge and um, videotape. Um, and you do have to stand right at the water's edge to uh, videotape there. Now, you'll see how the water is mirroring um, all these palm trees. And, you know, that's one thing, too, I like to show people is how that mirror effect works um, because this is where part of your lower end gets uh, gets kind of cut off with this mirroring it like I say this is like the house of mirrors um, and you get all this miraging effect the birds fly by you see them mirroring off the water not their shadow it's actually their mirror their mirror image um, and you know you can you can see sticks in the water you can even see the water moving the current of the water moving and these are the things that I take in and you know I view them and I also look at the like this um, marker right here it you can see it uh, its reflection in the water but it isn't as long why is that why isn't it as long uh, because that's due to that mirroring and that mirroring, like I say, the farther an object gets away or goes from the camera, you get to see less of the lower end because of its uh, diffraction. Um, let's face it, 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 it has to do with some kind of diffraction where the light is deflecting me up higher to where I'm not actually getting, excuse me, getting the lower end. And later on here, I'm going to show you with a couple other videos what I mean by that. Um, well, even some in this this particular video, um, I'm going to slow a few things down, and I actually should be slowing this down, but um, it would really, really make my video real long, and, you know, observations are boring, but observations are very good, because we can see what's actually going on, instead of just brushing it off as, oh, that's just a mirage, you're not seeing that, that's an illusion, 
um, or don't believe your eyes, you know, that's a good one when you look at the definition of mirage. Um, no, there's, there's a reason for all of this stuff occurring. And in my previous video, I mentioned many different things, and all of that contribute to the issue. Um, you know, no matter what a scientist is going to tell me, they can't tell me what I'm seeing in this video. I am my own judge, and I know what I'm seeing. And I'm seeing stuff being deflected. Um, and th that's where this miraging, the house of mirrors, um, everything plays a role in this. The humidity, the evaporation rate, it causes, um, how should I say, like a ramp. A ramp of water that builds up the further away my camera gets that causes um, me to lose the lower ends of uh, particular items. Like right here, I'm catching everything above, everything that's high, um, I catch it with my camera because the lower end is causing this deflection. Now, these rocks are much closer, but what I like about this right here, and um, uh, hang on, I'm going to slow this down a little bit. Um, well, no, I don't have to, but you can see the bird sitting out there on it. Um now, what's going to come up is going to kind of blow your mind a little bit here. And I slowed this down um, so you can see better. All right, I slowed this uh, little clip right here down quite a bit. Because, you know, when I first saw it on my viewing screen on my camera, I thought it was a couple of boats sitting out there. But actually what it is is one boat sitting out there. And two guys standing on the boat fishing. I mean, you can see their fishing poles. These guys ain't standing in the water out in the middle of the Gulf. Um, I don't care if it's low tide or not. <laughs> I've never seen anybody go walking out there standing and fishing, standing in the water. Uh, we don't wade fish around here too much. Uh, maybe if you're standing right on the shore, but these guys ain't right on the shore. And, and you know, you say, well, where's the boat? Where's the boat? This is the diffraction. This is the area right here that actually shows you how this diffraction works. It's a deflection. The light is being deflected up, so I'm getting half of these guys' body. I'm getting the top end of their bodies. And, you know, later on, I, I even got some other video that will actually show you how this actually works. And... I really like doing this because it, it really brings up a lot of questions for people to, when you look at, you know, you see this water right here, but you also see this gap between this light blue line and above it. Um, I could draw pictures on it, put lines on it, but what I want you to do is just see it with your own eyes. Um, it makes more sense that, you know, you see these things moving around in there. But this is your depth perception. These guys are a lot further away than they appear, and their boat is actually disappeared. Now, it's not over the edge of the curve. It's not. It didn't go over the curve. Um, and, you know, somebody's going to say, oh, yeah, it did. It went over the curve, and, and you're only seeing them. Well, man, boy, am I a lucky guy because I got a bunch of them that show this right here. I mean, a bunch of them that show things disappearing, and one of them's even closer so, and it literally does show you how things will disappear in this invisible zone. And that's where this deflection, diffraction um, of the light, it's bending upward. So it causes this boat to disappear that they're standing in. Um, and, you know, it, it's hard to imagine this occurring, but you got to think about this water. The further away from a camera that's in the air, this, this evaporated water is causing this ramped up, uh, it's causing like a ramp, and that ramp is deflecting the light from me seeing that boat. Now, you can do a lot of experiments on this, and that's one of the things that I, I do intend to do, is try to do an experiment with some mirrors. Uh, the problem is, is finding, you know, mirrors at a cheap rate. Um, you know, I, I look in uh, Goodwill and Salvation Army and stuff like that, but I can't seem to find any just plain old mirrors. So, you know, I might go to a mirror shop and see if they've got some old mirrors that they pulled out that they're willing to depart with cheaply. Um, 
But again, you know, you can see these two guys fishing with their fishing poles. You can see the water current moving. You can see, uh, you know, things that look like they're floating in the water. But what I think that is, is just the water current itself. It may be little fish swimming around, waking up the water, you know. Um, but I see this in several of my videos, and this is a good point um, and good things to show. This is great observation because you do have to ask yourself, you know, where is this at? Look, I can see the water. I can see everything. But where is these guys' boats at? Where is it at? Uh, again, like, you know, getting real low to the water, I am compressing it. It's like getting low to a board and looking at the top surface of the board. The lower I get, the skinnier that sliver gets. And this is where that diffraction occurs. Um, look at my fish tank experiment. Um, that kind of does give you a little hint on why things do disappear. But it doesn't give you the full hint because I, I should have done something else too with that experiment and I will try maybe later on to do this all right now uh, keep an eye out I'm gonna let it go back to full speed and then I'm gonna slow it down again on another spot I mean you can obviously see some of the stuff that's farther back there sticks up um, and like I said I just catch the tip top of it uh, the farther back these things are because of that diffraction uh, refraction, angular resolution, you know, I just cannot, my camera cannot pick up the, the stuff that's below uh, because of that evaporation rate, um, the evaporated water, the water molecules in the air. You know when you look through a, a glass fish tank that things are distorted and there's some things that you can't even see. Um, and I showed you that with my hand going behind the fish tank in one of my experiments too. Um, so, Again, you know, these are some of the things. Now, you, you'll see that these rocks are a lot, lot closer to me than the rocks that are farther out there. And it's pretty obvious because you can actually see the water. And look at this bird right there that I just passed. Um, there's a bunch of stuff here I passed that I should have took a little more time on because I'm not even sure what they are. But, you know, it gives you a kind of a perspective of what you're actually seeing out there. And, you know, again, I have to delete some of the audio in this uh, only because uh, I was trying to explain it as I was watching it. And it isn't exactly what we see. Um, because, I'm, I'm, again, I'm looking at this little four-inch screen. But once I get it on my computer and look at it, I can obviously see what's closer and what's farther away. Okay. Um, and you'll see this uh, water line right here. And here's where I'm going to slow it down. Um, I'm going to slow it down here because I seen something in this part that was pretty neat too. Um, if you look to the right of this uh, channel marker, you'll see like a little shadow uh, a few inches from the edge of it. Almost in the middle of the screen, just left to the middle of the screen, you see a shadow. But you'll also start seeing some lights flash. Um, and that is a tower way in the background. Um, and, and what's really weird is you do see this shadow. And you'll see those lights flash. There they go. Um, so, you know, this is why you can't see none. All this uh, uh, humidity in the way. Um, but for some reason, my camera was picking up that. Uh, which was pretty interesting because you see the light flash at the top and at the bottom. Why? Because it is being mirrored. And these rocks that are to the right of the screen are much, much closer than, you know, that particular shadow. Um, and these are the things I love to observe. I, I mean, when you really start looking at things, they're not what science says they are. And, you know, we just believe them because... We, we're kind of forced to, um, and I don't know how to explain it, but, you know, we get put in school, we get educated, whatnot, but are we truly getting educated with truth, or are we getting educated with their theories of what we're supposed to be seeing?
what they they tell us that we're seeing not what you think you're seeing so again think for yourself be a critical thinker and kind of uh, start questioning what you have been taught that's that's what I try to tell people question what you have been taught because e even these lights you know you see them flashing um, sometimes at the top and not at the bottom or sometimes at the bottom and not at the top but why is that because the water is disturbing the flashing uh, the mirroring effect is disturbing the flashing um, and then that's why you're not seeing it sometimes okay and you can obviously see that those rocks are much closer to me and if you watch some of the, even some of the birds in the background they'll kind of disappear when they get to a certain part low into the water at the edge of the water all right so we're gonna let it go back to me talking here and uh, it's gonna be just a short talk and then I'm gonna slow it down again on another part some more islands now I know where I'm at here some more islands and I believe this is actually land that you're you're just seeing the higher points of the land further out there I mean there are islands up in citrus It'd probably be hard to even show this on a on a map. Uh, <laughs> yeah, now right in here, of course, you you see the little white dot in the back. That's probably a boat way back there. Um, watch some of my boat videos, and you can see them go to this point where they're just a little dot, or it could be a a bird, you know, sitting in the water out there. I'm not saying positively that it's a boat, but. I see boats shaped like that on some of my videos. Now, look at look at this water right here. I mean, you can see that these rocks are close. And this sign is right behind the rocks because there's signs out here. There's a couple of them that, you know, say line line of rock uh, or look rock danger submerged rocks. That's that's usually what they say. Look rocks uh, and then danger and then submerged rocks. Uh, they, put those signs up in a lot of places but you'll see PVC pipes sticking up in some places where some of these airboat guys go along and they'll mark these rocks with PVC pipe um, that are just barely underneath the water so they don't hit them um, now I'm kinda going over the tops of these rocks uh, I like to keep right at the edge of them and you'll see a few other things in the background and those are those pipes like I say PVC pipes that stick up back there. Now this is a um, a tripod that or tripod marker channel marker that um, is on a curve. It's on a bend out there in the channel, and I videotaped this from Bayport also. Um, but it's hard to distinguish right where the water line is due to this mirroring effect. Um, and again, you know. As I zoom out here, I catch these uh, towers from the nuclear power plant up in Crystal River. Now, right here, um, what's really interesting is uh, um, how this diffraction is keeping me from seeing the lower part. And if you look at where that water line is, um, the light blue water line, this is that ramped up area. And again, here's where I actually had it focused pretty good. And then I get it out of focus, which duh, duh, dumb me. Um, but I come back to this area here too and videotape it some more. But do you see, you can obviously see where this big light blue line of water is. And just above that, um, you know, you, you see... Uh, these towers and then you see the smokestack but you see where the, the the smoke is being reflected just so far it's not being reflected all the way across that um, for some reason I, I don't know why it's probably maybe optical but right in that area between that light blue line and the, the top of those towers is is the vanishing point um, you don't see nothing there now you do see the smoke being reflected off of it, but that's not water out there that's actually laying in the 
in the ocean. That's water that's in the air and it's causing this ramped up. Um, it, it's causing like a ramp and it's deflecting the light rays off that bottom edge to where you cannot see nothing. Um, and again, you know, I do have a vanishing point to my camera also. And that is that invisible zone uh, that you cannot see nothing lower there. And people will tell you, well, that's because it's under the other side of the curvature of Earth. No, it's not. Look at the video. This video really shows a lot. And that's what I want to do. And there's going to be more to this video. I'm going to uh, definitely put some more video out and show you how, um, you know, this area right here that you're looking at um, is actually being ramped up. Um, it does ramp it up and all that water that you see that's in light blue is not really water it's more water molecules built up in the air to create this illusion that this water line is going that high up the water line isn't um, and, and that's the whole purpose of my observations is to really observe and try to calculate you know what is going on in these videos and why the bottom lower ends of these towers are not being shown uh, again it's that deflection that diffraction uh, that bending of light now see where that boat just went by it's down much lower more toward that harder water appearance so everything above that is slowly being ramped up it's like a slow ramp ramping up to those towers and everything below it I mean, I might catch the treetops at the edge of uh, that blue line, but nothing back behind it, okay? So ho hopefully you can understand that and you can picture that in your mind, how that all that evaporated water molecules are being ramped up just above that blue water line, okay? Um, now, I've got more video that goes with this, and uh, I'm going to show and, and kind of, maybe be able to prove that vanishing point or that uh, invisible zone in some later videos. So again, I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I hope my explanations are, are pretty good and I hope you do understand what I'm trying to explain here. All right, I, I'm going to end this video and start a new one. Thanks for watching.